Hi again, everyone, and welcome to La Soufre today, where we take your questions and we try to answer them regarding the Soufre volcano eruption in St. Vincent. So Richie, uh, this week has been very busy. We see you guys down in the crater collecting rock samples, taking gas samples from a helicopter, thermal imagery, installing equipment and whatnot. What is all of that about and why is it important or useful to local authorities like NEMO? Well, the reason we monitor the volcano is really to inform the authorities like NEMO, the government, about what we think is happening so that they could take action to minimize the impact that the volcano can has on, have on people. So our objective really is to collect information that would then feed into decisions by policymakers to reduce the impact of these dangerous things upon people's lives. So we're really trying to save people, allow people to live safely in places like volcanoes. So can you take one of the techniques like the thermal imagery and explain how, what that is and how that can help in terms of providing information yeah. to Nemo? Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the things that we did recently was to use a camera which has sensors in it that allows us to take an image of the, of the, of the volcano, of the dome, and from that image detect how, tom, how hot it is. Um, and in this case, when we took the, the, the temperature measurements, it indicated that it, it was above um, 600 degrees um, Celsius which tells us how hot the material is, which tells us therefore how dangerous it is to go close to it. Because it looks like a black rock. It looks really like just like another rock, but it's extremely hot. And if you go close to it, you could put yourself in some way. So doing that tells us something about the nature of the material itself, scientifically, but it helps us illustrate how dangerous it could be to get close to it. And so on the weekend, we got some reports of glowing coming from, um, from the crater. And we just wanted to know what can people expect over the next week or so from the volcano, particularly those on the western side of the island, the leeward side. Yeah, so um, as the dome grows and it will get bigger. As it gets bigger and as part of the process of growing, bits of pieces of, pieces of the dome fall off. They fall off, they're hot, and it's at the very least they could ignite, they could cause the vegetation on the crater floor to burn and if it's in the night, you'll see that burning. Also, as it grows, it gets close to the surface. And the dome in the night is what we call incandescent. It glows. It, you don't see the glow in the day because it's too bright. But it's possible that people on the western side would begin to see that glow from the lower plants. So in the coming weeks, sorry, in, in the near future, it's possible just by because it's growing that people would begin to see the mountain growing. It looks like it's bright, it looks like it's got a fire. And that would be unusual just simply because of the dome growing and, and it's hot, causing interacting with things and causing things to happen. And I, I would imagine it would continue to smell sulfur and that kind of thing as well. Yes, yes, yes. The gases will continue, they will continue to see the, the damage to the vegetation. It might creep down the slope a little bit. As the plume becomes more pronounced, it's probably going to go further afield. So therefore, the wind will take it, and you smell sulfur. You smell, you smell the other gas that you have, mainly sulfur. So that's the thing that you, you smell all the time. The other gases, some of them you won't smell. But yes, the gas will go to the wind. They smell the gas. They will see the damage to the vegetation, and they probably will see the glow of the mountain from time to time. And so, one of those gases, those odorless gases, is carbon yeah. dioxide. You want to tell us a little yeah. bit more about carbon yeah. dioxide and why it's dangerous? Yeah. Well, carbon dioxide is thing that we exhale all the time. Um, we take in oxygen, exhale carbon dioxide. Um, the plants like it and stuff like that, but we don't like it. And if you breathe too much of it, you 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 basically occupy your lungs with with less oxygen and more of a gas that you can't make use of. So it's dangerous for you. It's not. It's odorless. You can't smell it. While it's sulfur, you can smell it. You move away from the sulfur. Carbon dioxide you can't smell. Also, it's denser than the surrounding air. So it, it collects in hollows, in valleys, and in, in depressions like the crater. So there might be pockets in it there where it's, where it's very concentrated. So at the very least, it will put you to sleep because you don't have enough oxygen. And if you're exposed to it for too long, you basically die from a lack of oxygen because you're breathing carbon dioxide. So it's quite dangerous in the crater and close to the areas where the gases are being emitted along the crater rim. 
Right. And so that's why, of course, we keep reminding people that people should not yeah. be visiting the volcano for any reason at this time. And it really should only be visited by the authorities. So thanks yeah. again, Richie, for the information. Best of luck to you and the team. And we just want to remind everyone that's watching that the NEMO and the UV Seismic Research Center are the official sources of information on the volcano and that we should be paying attention to those platforms in terms of getting information on, on science and evacuations. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye.